Howdy y'all, I am Ice Gold, and lately I have been doing quite a bit of Ice PvP. I have been doing 25 games for this video specifically. I decided, you know, I was gonna hop on my ice and do 25 games of Ice PvP, and I was gonna put every single one of them into this video, win or lose, and just to see what the results looked like. So. That is what I did, <laughs> and I'm going to go to 50 as well. I will I will think about going further if there's interest, but for right now, uh, even though the season ended last night as I record this, um, I did get 25 games done in the, what was it, April season, something like that, but yeah, I, I did 25 games, and this is how they went. Uh, these are the stats that I'm rocking. I've got 173 damage, which is just a couple off of the cap, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then I've got 83 resist, which is pretty high. I will say that 83 resist is really, really good. Perfect accuracy for ice, and then 2% fizz chance on uh, myth, but you know, I, I didn't ever fizzle a minute during this, so I think it's all good. Um, and then the low crit rating, that just sort of is what it is. Uh, you'll you'll see it plays a part in, in this video, but that is what we're doing here. Uh, but really, really high block, and I've got almost a thousand to balance, and this really, really helped in some of the balance matchups that I had over the course of this video. So, the block being high is really, really helpful. And then I've only got 43 peers. It's a little low, um, but you know, <laughs> it's it's what I've got to run. 173 damage and 43 peers. I could have 47 peers, but then my damage would drop all the way to 166, and that just generally sucks. So, <laughs> 43 peers is what I'm rocking with, but once this circle slot deck that gives pip conversion comes out with a new raid, and I think the August Sage deck gives that sort of thing too, I will be able to run max pierce and pretty much max damage, so I'm really excited for that. 86% pip conversion with 946 rating. This is very important. Uh, you will see in this video that pip conversion is so, 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 so important for an ice to have, and you need a real high uh, percentage chance for it, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's just really, really good. And then perfect pips, 158 shads, uh, and then, you know, 198 arch mastery rating, which is pretty standard, and then 14.3k health. This is really, really good. So, those are the stats. This is the deck. Kind of, kind of just uh, what I've been running over this, over the course of this video. I tried not to change it throughout. Uh, I don't actually think I added anything. I think I might have gotten rid of. Yeah, I got rid of a. I got rid of a Shrike for a uh, writing the scales at some point in there. But yeah, this is the this is the main deck, and then this is the side deck that I used for the duration of the video. This is the Death Melter. <laughs> you will see just how I did against Death. You know, this Thieving Dragon is a boon to have. Snowman recently got buffed. That's really good. Uh, and then obviously, you know, Volcanic Golem is super good. So. That's what I've got there, and then as for the side, over the course of this video, you'll see at the end, but I uh, have <laughs> decided to make the executive decision to run an extra Tama OG for the time being in place of a Frostbite, so that's just what I'm going to run for 26 to 50, so yeah, <laughs> I guess I should get started showing you all the games. So for game one, I went against a Death Wizard. This, this game, it had its own video. This was the first um, game that I did for this video, and I uploaded, I think at the last week of May is when I uploaded this video. I think uh, the 31st even, so that is what happened here. But yeah, this is just the ending of that game, uh, and I won with 7,129 HP when the guy fled. I won with about 49.7% of my health left, Safe ice matchup, safe ice victory, rather, and I got 11 elo for it. Game 2 was also versus a death wizard, and I won with 7,155 HP remaining. Uh, the result was I won with 49.9% of my health left, a safe ice victory, and I gained 15 elo for it. Now, I did get some pretty nasty thieving dragons going on here. Uh, but this guy, he also, he earthwalkered me uh, for an OT counter, which I thought was a little interesting. And he also put a myth dispel on me, I presume to stop me from taking a minotaur. But 
I mean, <laughs> the the great thing about ice is that if you dispel ice with any school other than ice itself, then an ice can just snowman it off and get a, a 65% chromatic shield for it. So <laughs> that's pretty funny, but that is how game two went. Game three was against a balance, which is usually a nightmare matchup for me, but I was able to win with 9,208 HP when the guy fled. And he was interestingly AFK for a bunch of turns at the beginning, so I was able to win with 64.2% of my health left, a safe margin of victory, and I got 8 ELO for it. Now, he was AFK at the beginning, as y'all saw, but then he started using this spell called Scales of Destiny, and what it does is... It, it's basically the new Hydra. What it does is, if you get an Ice and a Life Pip, you can send this spell, and if you, the target has a shield or a heal over time on them, it will echo those, and, you know, it'll echo a 65% tower shield, which is, you know, arguably even worse than what it was with Hydra, and it'll echo a 580 heal. So that is what Scales of Destiny does, and... It's why Balance is honestly, in my opinion, still a top three school. He also took this random Eye of Vigilance, and I wasn't really sure what that was about, <laughs> but uh, he also, my personal highlight of the game was when he sent a mock into two shields here, so that was uh, <laughs> that was pretty fun, but hey, you know, I got, I got eight ELO for it. I will take that any day of the week. Game 4 was my first real test. I went against a PvE Storm Wizard. <laughs> and yeah, PvE is a real problem in this meta. It's it's basically you just you spam a bunch of buffs like you would in PvE and you send one big hit and try and go for the one shot, typically in strike. Um, and it's it's just a really cheesy way to play, but I was able to come out of this with a dub here. I went with 2,632 HP. Uh, the result was I won with 18.4% of my health left, and that was a likely margin of victory for me, and I was able to gain 14 ELO from it, so <laughs> that was cool. And you'll see, you know, uh, he, he spammed his traps, you know, like he does, <laughs> and eventually he goes into Shrike, and, you know, that's when, that's when he... He can really put on the pressure because Shry gives an extra 50% pierce. It goes kind of hard. It's it's like a PVA's best friend. But uh, you he he also used two different Minotaurs over the course of the game to counter my shields. Uh, he used the main deck and a side deck. But the second one that he used in Shrike, he he wasted his pips by doing this. And uh, if if he hadn't done that, if he had done something else. Uh, maybe like a shatter or whatever. He would have still had the pips to send a storm out, which might have actually killed me by just the tiniest margin. So, yeah. <laughs> but I did stay on top of things. I had this fatty 85 storm shield that comes from my uh, Dream Stalker hat, which is really, really good against PD weirdos like uh, this strat. And then he sent his King Art hoping to kill, but. No cigar. <laughs> and then I was able to finish him off with a Kelvin, a base Kelvin, you know, just like I do. And I was able to catch the dub. And I got, you know, as I said before, 14 ELO off of it. So <laughs> that was game four. So we get to game five. Oh boy, this... This game was against another balance, and he used six burns. And I'm going to show you all six of them here. And four of the six were done within the last, like, three-ish minutes of the game. And it was a very annoying game. It's like ice versus balance is already, like, a safe balance type of matchup. So for, for this, for him to have had to resort to this... And what was crazy is that I still won. I still won with about 830 HP. I, I won with about 5.8% of my health left. That was the margin. Uh, lean ice margin of victory uh, by 5.8. And then I got 10 ELO off of it. So how about that? <laughs> and, you know, he was 
he was really doing all of the balance wizard things that balance wizards do. He he burned six times, like I said. Uh, he he also took this weird eye of vigilance. Um, it seems to be a constant so far, but <laughs> yeah, he took the eye of vigilance, um, and then he did he he gearheaded two of my frostbites that I sent. I sent one here, and then it immediately got gearheaded, <laughs> and then I sent one. Or I sent another one later on in the game, and I didn't even P serve that when I needed to, so that got gearheaded too. Um, and you know, if I if I'm not P serving when I really really need to, like if I have eight pips and I'm trying to frostbite into an A bomb for example, and I don't P serve, that's really really bad, obviously because I give up my pressure, and a gearhead just becomes that much better of a move. So there was that, of course, <laughs> and then. It, it really comes down to it. It's like, I've, I've shown you all the burns, but if I did not crit this Thieving Dragon at the very end of the match, he would have... I'm not sure if he would have been able to kill me, necessarily. Maybe he would have, but um, this Thieving Dragon, if I hadn't crit here and killed by, you know, literally 13 HP, <laughs> like, he probably would have pulled it back just because he's a balance wizard in a balance versus ice matchup. So this was a very annoying game, but I was able to come out on top in the end. And what's crazy is that I only got 10 left for all this. Um, if I had lost like I was technically supposed to, <laughs> because, you know, ice versus balance, I would have lost probably a hell of a lot more than, than 10. So, that's what's going on. <laughs> that was how Game 5 ended up going. But I'm still really, really glad that I came out on top in it. Of course, all good things come to an end. And in this case, it was my win streak <laughs> thus far in the video. In Game 6, I queued a Life Wizard. And for those unaware, Life and Ice, while being neutral on the Rochambeau wheel... From a fundamental perspective, Ice being a low damage school and Life being a healing school, it's not exactly a recipe for like a, an environment conducive to an Ice victory. Um, but all I think I need to show you is the last like six-ish minutes <laughs> of, of this game. And um, yeah... So, needless to say, I lost this match. It was the first loss of the video, and the guy had full HP after heal spamming. Um, I asked him about it afterward, and he said he did it because he was bored. So, um, round of applause for Scott Dark. <laughs> anyway, the lowest that I was able to get him was around 5k. He was, he was still healing a lot, a lot. I think we did relatively similar damage to one another, just in total. But, I mean, he's a life. I'm an ice kind of kind of hard to argue with that right so <laughs> the results ended up being uh, dark plus 100 percent margin of victory <laughs> which is a safe life victory and i lost 15 elo for it and yeah you know as i said this is this is the last little bit of the video <laughs> or the of the of the match and uh, this was like a 45-minute match. Most of the rest of it was, you know, like normal run-of-the-mill type stuff. Um, it's like he also he also carried fire spells, so I couldn't really go for my Kelvin when I wanted to. But oh well, right. <laughs> so yeah, that is how game six went. Can't win them all, especially not when you're against a heal spammer. But we're back in action in Game 7. We went against a death. It was mostly just like a textbook death game. She raked a lot, weaknessed a lot, but I had snowmen, so <laughs> that allowed me to take the dub. I, uh, I do call my deck that I run on this Ice Wizard the Death Melter because it truly does perform really, really well against death. Ice is really... In my honest opinion, the best answer to the death school right now. <laughs> Gonna be so for real. Um... Because, like, Myth versus Death, which is supposed to be the hard counter, is more of a toss-up. But Ice versus Death, you're actually favored by a little bit. It's nothing more than a lean margin. But if you play correctly, like, a good Ice will beat a good Death. Like, a slight majority of the time. So, I, this match, you know, it did actually get, like, way closer <laughs> at the end. Because I had to trade a Grim with an Abominable Weaver. But 
I did still end up winning in the end. The result was I won with 1,081 HP, and I that was a 7.5% margin of victory. Lean Ice victory, and I got 16 ELO for that, which was pretty good, in my opinion. But, of course, in Game 8, we went against another PvE player, and I guess it was like, he started out as PvE, and his PvE, like, he wasn't really trying to go for a one-shot necessarily, uh, like I thought he was. If I had known that he was gonna, you know, do his King Art weirdness, <laughs> like, earlier on, I would have prepped for it accordingly, but he, basically what he did was, he, you know, trap stack. Uh, he, he was a fire, so, you know, fire versus ice, that is the hard counter matchup for the ice, and it's just really not as conducive to a victory, but, I mean, red fire versus ice, you'll see coming up pretty soon that uh, it is still winnable, but if it's PvE fire, it's a lot harder, because King Art removes seven shields before it hits, which is absurd, <laughs> in my honest opinion, but, you know, maybe I'm just ice brand on that, so... You know, he did his PvE thing at the start. Um, he he got me down pretty low with that. But then he just started spamming Dark Surge and Empower. And he was able to use high pip hits in quick succession. Which, you know, I'm no designer. But I don't think this was ever intended <laughs> to happen. So, yeah, man. Um, yeah, he, he spammed high pip hits. And, you know, he did his PvE thing at the start to, like, drop me about half. And, yeah, that was how that match went. <laughs> he needed uh, two Sun Serpents to kill me, so how about that? But, interestingly, uh, about an hour afterward, he got himself muted for Filter Evasion, which was kind of funny. He was um, really, really talking a lot of weight on, I guess, somebody else in the arena, and... Uh, it was not me taking the screenshot. I'm just I'm just gonna throw that out there. I just saw it happen, but but I do know who did take the screenshot. And uh, a hall monitor was there and muted him. So a bit cathartic on my end, but hey, you know, whiz I guess. <laughs> that's uh that's the PVE experience. Karma's a real thing. But okay, so for the results. Uh, game 8 versus PvE Fire, and, and then I lost when he had 4,417 HP left. The result was Fire Gem plus 39.1 margin of victory health, you know, and safe fire match, and minus 16 ELO for me. So, everything I gained from that death game <laughs> just sort of went down the drain. Uh, and he was higher ranked than me, so... Yeah, a uh, fun ELO system we all deal with here, team. Game 9 was a nice return to form. I The game threw me a bone. <laughs> it gave me another Death Wizard, as crazy as that might be to hear, especially in this meta with how Wraith is. But yeah, Game 9. <laughs> I went against the Death, and I was able to win with 6,991 HP. The result was Goa plus 48.8 uh, percentage points for a margin of victory. Safe Ice victory, and I gained only four ELO for it, but, I mean, at least I was having fun. More fun than I was having against the PvE guy, but, hey, <laughs> you know. But this guy, he did some interesting stuff. He he was, like, he was trying to dual school fire, interestingly. Uh, he had, he took an Immolate, and he also had uh, Wildfires Pact, which was... You know, <laughs> kind of you know, do what you want, do what you want. I won't, uh, I won't judge. But uh, I will say, trying to actually dual school and you know hit with two schools, it never works just because of how pierce duels work. So yeah, that's uh, that's how Wiz goes. <laughs> and I think dual schooling could provide some some cool content for the game. But for the time being, it's sort of just half baked, and uh, this guy sort of found that out. So. I was able to end it with a Lord of Winter, which is a spell that I think this is the only time I ever used it in this video. Um, <laughs> it's it's a neat little spell. It gambits for every shield that you have. Uh, it'll give you a power pit back. So it can be kind of cool to, I guess, spam, <laughs> maybe. But yeah, um, I just used it here as sort of a finisher. So that is how game nine went. Pretty easy win, but... Yeah, I mean, it was it was just sort of run of the mill. Didn't gain too much elo off of it. 
Game 10 was intense. <laughs> All right. I got a fire, and fire versus ice, <clears throat> it's like, on average, it's about a likely fire victory by about 15% margin of victory. But I was able to win with 1,201 HP, which was a margin of victory of about 8.4%. Uh, so lean victory, and I got 10 ELO for it. But this match was like like I said, it was intense. Like <laughs> I got I got this nasty frostbite that did like thirty five hundred <laughs> over three rounds, which is just nutty. And I also got this Mii uh, non crit Tamauji. This is really how high speeds fire, and you know just like spamming Tamauji, getting good frostbites onto him. It's like that is how you take dubs against fire. And if they do go for like a lightning bats on your frostbite, then you can snowman and sort of like try and force the king art of the elephant. But yeah, it's like fire's resist is low. And the reason why it's not like a safe fire type matchup is because the ice can still like out tank with uh, like, like brace is really helpful. And then like, it's, uh, it's like I'm saying, you know, like resist is a big problem for ice when dealing with other schools, like especially death, but against schools like Fire and Storm that just don't have that much resist, and Ice can still reasonably eke out a dub, it's just mostly done by, you know, spamming Tamauji, Frostbite, just these low pip hits, you gotta sort of match the Fire's vibe, and you'll be able to win, as ironic as that is. So, I would highly recommend watching the full match as the end got really crazy really fast, um, so, I mean, just ask in the comment section, and I will link the match for you. I'll do that with any of the matches uh, that you want to, like, any of the full matches that any of you want to see. So, be sure to leave a comment if you want to see the full matches of some of these. Game 11 was a lot like Game 10. It was <laughs> super intense. Um, and I was able to get a win against this Fire Wizard with 1,409 HP, so just a little bit more than Game 10 with the result being gold plus 9.8%, a lean margin of victory, plus 15 ELO. So, 15 ELO for that, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you like to see it. So, uh, But this guy, he sent just a random Scion, and he also sent a weakness Ifrit a little later on, and to be honest, I think these moves cost him the game, because uh, that was a lot of piffs that he burned on just not a lot of damage, and <clears throat> like he could have, he could have used them for better stuff. Is kind of what I'm getting at. So there was that. Uh, and then he also, he also had, he was also packing glacial shields, and he he used a bunch of those. And he runs those because he'd get you know rolled by storms if he didn't. But I sort of gets caught in the crossfire like usual with that. And you know he'll pack him to beat storm, but if the shoe fits, right? I also took this meaty abominable weaver. And it, it did some pretty solid damage. And the ending was, yeah, I mean, <laughs> definitely watch the ending. It got, it was really intense. So that is how game 11 went. Sort of just a textbook ice, re reg ice rather, versus reg fire type game. And uh, these these are really enjoyable to play. I'm not I'm not even gonna lie. It's it's real intense. It always goes down to the wire. So whenever neither party is doing that weird PVE nonsense, the game is a lot more fun to play. You know what I was saying about you know how if neither party does PVE nonsense, the game is a lot more fun. Well, the very next game after that, <laughs> I got this guy. So, how about that? <laughs> it was an ice mirror. It was, uh, but I was, you know, reg ice versus PVE, and I did lose this one. And the guy had eight thousand seven hundred and nine HP uh, at the end of it. And you know, against a lot of other schools, like you saw in game four, I was able to outpace that storm doing PVE. But if I'm in ice trying to hit into another ice's resist. It's not gonna. It's not gonna go that way. So, this this result should not really be surprising. The result was uh, frost plus sixty three point eight percent with that margin of victory, safe PVE ice, and I did unfortunately lose eleven elo for that. So, undid most of the actual good games <laughs> that we that we just saw. So, 
there was that. And really all you need to see is just this mammoth doing 23,000 with 10 buffs. Because he totally needed 10 buffs, right? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, And this is why PvE needs to get changed. It is all dependent on if you can pull the counters. And if you can't, you automatically lose. I think I might have seen one Ice Wyvern in my uh, starting hand. And then I just never saw another for the rest of the game. Up until, I think, like the round before uh, he took his Mammoth. So, I also didn't pull my Dispel the whole game. And he also stole my 85% uh, Snow Shield that I get from my wand. So, yeah. Um, that, what? yeah. Fun game we play, ain't it? <laughs> and immediately after it, I got another Ice Mirror. So, <laughs> I was a little on edge, but this one did go uh, much more just in my favor. Uh, game 13, it was versus another ice, a reg ice this time, <laughs> and uh, if I say so myself, I think I'm pretty good at uh, reg ice mirrors, even though this is the only one that I <laughs> that I did in this video, because who cues reg ice, you know, it's like I'm pretty sure my most successful PvP video is talking about like the, um, like the rarest matchup. <laughs> which is two reg ices going against each other, because nobody plays ice, nobody plays reg ice. Uh, so, but in this one, you know, I did pretty well. I won with 7,028 HP when the guy fled, which uh, was a result of gold plus 49 percentage points on the dot, 49.0, uh, for that margin of victory. And it was a safe ice victory. Although, I mean, safe ice victory for me, right? <laughs> and, uh, I got 12 ELO out of it, which I thought was pretty nice, considering I had just lost 11 to, uh, <laughs> to, to the guy who felt the need to put 10 buffs and strike against me. So there was that. But yeah, um, some things that I think y'all should see are this game of chicken for the A-bomb. I, I get the second shad here, and I'm just going to speed out the clip, and I actually cast that A-bomb like way, way in the future. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it... It took a while, but the A-bomb that I did get was pretty good in uh, Reg Ice Mirror. You know, you do need to take your hits well, uh, because Ice, you know, it's just it's the Shield School, it's the Resist School, and you already don't have a lot of Pierce. You're already not great at countering Shields, so it's sort of all on that. And if you can take more open hits than your opponent in a Mirror, you will most likely win that Mirror. So, there's that. Uh, eventually, we sort of started to pull away from stalemate territory, and I started to get the upper hand, and I think he realized that, and <laughs> that's uh, that's about when he fled. So, there was that. And then this is what my sideboard looked like after the game. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was kind of in shambles. Um, I had to refill quite a bit after that. So, whiz, I guess. Fun mirror match. Okay, game 14, I went against another fire who was a captain, and this was a bit of a frustrating one, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I, uh, we, we were sort of trading back and forth, um, but eventually at the end, I mean, I mean, you'll see it, I mean, I, I got this meaty Tama, I got this meaty Tama Uji at, um, uh, in there, and it did good damage, but... Yeah, uh, this happened at the very end. I needed to crit these hits at the very end uh, in order to catch the dub. But, I mean, I do run low crit. I don't run a hat that gives crit. Stalker hat is uh, what I just really prefer. And, yeah, this is... Uh, <laughs> I, I kind of paid the price for that here at the end. So, you know... Game 14 versus Fire, you know, lost when the guy had 193 HP. Crits would have saved me, but the result was Solar Eyes by, uh, winning by a margin of 1.7 percentage points, which was the first and only tilt margin of victory here for anybody, and I lost 9 ELO for it. And I, I, it could have been it could have been worse, I guess, <laughs> but I also really wish I, I had won that because it could have been my biggest ELO gain of this entire video. Um, if I had been able to crit those last two hits. So, tough, but 
it was what it was. Game 15 was also pretty frustrating. Um, <laughs> and I went against this Storm Wizard. And yeah, I forgot to refill TCs beforehand. And uh, there, this, this match, I figured out that there is actually a glitch going on in this game. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, he, sent, he sent a random Storm Owl. Uh, like after he had uh, used the berry surprise because like uh, like the video on Wednesday, you know you can sort of spam storm owl like path B storm owl rather uh, if you have berry surprises on, uh, just so that way it can give you pips back. But he sent this storm owl through a shield, and it did one thousand six hundred and thirty six damage. It took me from you know about ten point eight k health down to nine point one k as it should have, but then I randomly lost another 600 health, which ended up being the deciding factor in the end. And he pivoted to PvE when he was in Shrike, and his owl killed me by around 300 HP, which meant that I died to a glitch. And but he was he was very excited about this. Um, <laughs> he was very excited about being me and. Yeah, you know, he's actually, I, I checked, and he's actually hidden on my channel. I don't remember why, but the last time I hit somebody, they were trying to say that the Nazis were the real victims of World War II. So, just in case we're wondering the <laughs> the level that you've got to be at to get hidden around here. So, the results were, uh, I did end up losing this game when the guy had 1,973 HP left. But if I had sent the Tamauji instead of the Volcanic Golem, he would have tied it. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, because that's just how ways works, you know. Shrike is goofy like that. Um, but, you know, instead of tying it, I was just like, okay, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see if I can survive with the uh, with Volcanic Golem. And, of course, couldn't because of the glitch. But the result was Colin plus 20.6 percentage points margin of victory. A likely storm type deal, and I ended up losing 17 whole elo for that, <laughs> which is uh, which is pretty whack. But yep, lost to a glitch. W spaghetti code. In game 16, I went against my first myth of the video, which I was kind of surprised it took me this long to get a myth wizard uh <laughs> there's a lot of myths in Q because of just how good myth is and myth is also really really good against ice so i was sort of dreading this match because you know it's like myth can just sort of like really just stomp on ice <laughs> and you'll kind of you'll kind of see that in a bit but uh for this game I, it, it honestly wasn't that bad. I managed to get this Weaver off for, you know, 4,000 damage. I mean, that is a lot <laughs> for an Ice, especially in the Myths Resist. But otherwise, it was kind of just a standard game. Um, I kind of just made, you know, like her main hits not as great. Uh, but, you know, that's just kind of what you have to do as an Ice. Mitigation is sort of your thing. And Myth is a school where you can't mitigate it, so <laughs> I guess just sort of forcing moves that do less overall damage is kind of just what you got to do. You know, you gotta you gotta keep brace up. Um, that's it's like that's real helpful. And then obviously you know you need buffs on your hits, which can be tough. But yeah, Myth is sort of like fire if it was if it just was a lot tankier. <laughs> and already you know I'm I'm barely. Uh, beating fire and even occasionally losing to fire. So ice versus myth is pretty tough, but uh, not in this scenario, which was nice. Um, so the results were I won with 4,776 HP. The results was a margin of victory of 33.3% for me, a safe margin of victory, and I got four ELO for it. So, you know, four ELO for beating, my, for beating one of my counter schools, right, team? But yeah, otherwise, just a pretty standard game. That 4K Weaver was honestly the highlight. So, you know how it goes. Just uh, kind of run of the mill. Okay, so game 16 was about the most normal game in the entire video. Game 17, I I kind of, hmm, I'm, <laughs> I'm speechless, I, I don't really know how to 
really describe it. I I went against this life wizard who was running Nautilus, and he actually fizzled a couple times, and then he finally powered it. Um, but I mean, it was uh, it was like a fever dream of a match. <laughs> like uh, like there was like between the Nautilus and then. You know, like I had to fend off his gin forever, and the whole time I was like, you know, what if he starts healing? Because it's like this guy was about as predictable as the weather here in Texas. So uh, <laughs> I, I had to like keep reshuffling my hand for a while because I pulled it early, which kind of sucked, but I did, fortunately didn't end up needing it. But yeah, I mean, eventually he took a Life King art and. What I did here was I tried to set up a Scion. I tried to set up an actual like Scion Gambit, and I was able to get it uh, with a good few buffs, and it and it did mass, uh, which was <clears throat> really really good for me because doing that much damage against the life is really important, even if he is just sort of doing God knows what. Um, <laughs> I think it was his first match because I think it was fifteen hundred uh, when I when I won here, so. Uh, I did win. I won with 9,262 HP. The result was a margin of victory of 64.6 percentage points for me, a safe margin of victory, and I gained 9 ELO for it. So there was a very perplexing shrike in there. I've I've never seen a life shrike, I'll be honest, but like he sent he sent just a base gin. And it put those overtimes on me, and, I mean, like, he wanted to just, like, do the actual damage with it, but then afterward, he sent a star spawn, and I was just real confused the whole way through this match. It was it was very late at night. I, I played a lot of these very late at night, but, uh, yeah, this game, it ended, uh, it, it did end in a pretty sizable margin of victory for me, but this... I rate it, you know. I, I unorthodox strats like this, maybe, maybe you know, if Fretbeard ever makes dual school viable, he can make it work. So, how about that? <laughs> but that's game seventeen for you. All right, so game eighteen starts the stretch of four games that I played on stream, and nineteen, twenty, and twenty-one all were part of their own video at the Ice Marathon a couple weeks ago. Maybe it was last week. I can't even remember. My brain's fried from doing all this. But the yeah, the uh, the one game that I streamed that didn't make it into this video, I could just show you the full thing. Um, <laughs> so I did catch how uh, the weird damage glitch happened again just briefly at the very end, like right before he fled. And it probably has something to do with hits into shields, but I do think it's worth reporting now that it's happened more than once. And... I mean, it did lose me game 15, um, and, I mean, the fact that it's a consistent thing that's happening is kind of worrisome, because it's like, if shields just aren't working like they should, and there's just a bunch of rounding errors, then that's, uh, that's a real problem. That's a real problem indeed. So, uh, yeah, uh, whiz, I guess, but, <laughs> yeah. For this match, I went against Zadkiss, uh, the Storm Wizard. And I won with 12,221 HP when the guy fled. And that was a result of a margin of victory of 85.2 percentage points for me. That was my biggest margin of victory this whole video, which was a safe victory, obviously. And I got 10 ELO for it. So, not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> I, I rock with it. And uh, he did send a Soul Sapper in there somewhere, but, I mean, I'm, I'm showing you all the full match. It's... Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was very short. He kind of understood what was going on. It was Ice versus Storm, so that's uh, that's Wiz for you. Game 19 was a, my first game against a balance in quite some time, and this this one, <laughs> this balance, uh, he was packing everything, dude. I mean, he he was packing, you know, he was packing Steel Giant. He had, you know, scarabs in. He had scorpions to swap over some tower shields. And, I mean, I got in some, some solid abombs. I got in a couple good abominable weavers. And those really, really helped me in this matchup. But I just want to mention something. <laughs> the fact that 
pip conversion is not just a thing that's built into the game 100% of the time is pretty stupid, in my honest opinion, because the matchup that I was winning by, like, a safe margin suddenly gets cut down to the 15 that I won it by. And I, I won this by, uh, like, with 2,210 HP, a margin of 15.4 percentage points, a likely victory, and I got 8 ELO off of it. And it was the game that I got to Knight on, which was, you know, good. I finally got there after, you know, 19 matches, so <laughs> that was kind of cool. But then, after the Scorpion, uh, I I go for a Frostbite A-Bomb combo, because I have 8 pips, and I don't want to get burned, and so I just decided to go for it. Um, and I don't pip conserve. I don't pip conserve the Frostbite. And he gearheads my frostbite back over to me and is able to stay protected and stalls me out for a while longer. And yeah, um, <laughs> he also he also was packing steel ward because I mean he just had everything. Like when I say he was packing everything, he was packing everything. And I had to back to back snowman to to catch the dub. And if he had had a judgment when he surged to max pips, I would have probably died. Because, you know, Waze is just like that. <laughs> and just to point out, he had 1,516 ELO and lost 13 for losing to me when I had 1695. And if I had lost to him, it would have probably reset multiple games worth of progress. So, how about that? <laughs> there really aren't many better indicators of the system being garbage than that, are there, team? For game 20, we went against another death, and... Yeah, ice versus death. You know, it's uh, <laughs> ice versus death is just sort of. It's one of those. It's like ice is the only school that I can play on and be happy when I see a death wizard because I went against this uh, this captain death and you know it's just sort of it's just sort of like a textbook example of a good ice versus a good death. Uh, it's just the tools that ice has do give us a good advantage over death, like, especially with Snowman, and I was just, you know, turning every single weakness he put on me, like, I, like every single weakness he put on me got turned into a shield, pretty much, um, because, you know, Evil Snowman is really, really good, um, especially for that, and then, like, just shields in general, like, I, Gollum is so good in this matchup, especially because poison is a thing that exists, and then, obviously, A-Bomb is a good hit and shield, there's just a lot of good options that Ice has, and I was really using them to the best of my ability. I also got a quad buff Tamauji, and that was a that was pretty massive. That was really really good <laughs> on my head. So, you know, just getting that uh, that quad buff Tama gave me a lot of damage, and yeah, it, it, it was good. <laughs> and uh, he did have the margin of victory in the last few turns because you know just being a death wizard but it was still another performance of about 10 percent on my part because that's just how death rocks so the results here i won with 2625 hp and i won by like with an 18.3 percent margin which was a likely margin victory and i gained 16 elo for it which was a pretty solid gain To kick off the final five games, we have game number 21, where I went against a death, another death, <laughs> and I, yeah, this this guy, this guy was using Monster Mash quite a bit. Uh, Monster Mash is death's new anti-aura spell, uh, because the devs, I guess, just decided the death needed an anti-aura spell, so that's cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, he was... He was using his monster mashes on uh, on my auras, but like I did with game 20, I was able to just turn all of those weaknesses into 65 shields with Evil Snowman, and that was really, really helpful. And there, there was a point where he used a red ghost, and it did 74 damage, which brought me from 9,665 to 9,591 HP. The math checks out there. But... My turn came up, and my health was 9,519, another loss of 72, meaning that because of this glitch that keeps happening, seemingly happening exclusively to shields that come from hidden shields, his red ghost did nearly double its value. 
And obviously that red ghost meant nothing, but I did lose game 15 because of the exact same glitch. And it's a consistent rounding error from the looks of things. And I do hope the devs will look into it because, you know, like if it lost me one game and I decide to make another one of these for 26-50, it'll probably happen again, right? But a personal highlight of mine was when he took this buffed Grim Reader <laughs> that only did 2,000 damage and gave me weaknesses to leverage with Snowman. So that was, that was a fun time. Um, <laughs> Grim Reader is a very, very good shad. It's arguably the best shad in the game right now, but... Ice is just so good against it, and, I mean, yeah, you, you saw. I mean, snowmen are just so, so good against death. And, yeah, I was able to win with 3,710 HP when the guy fled, with the result being a margin of victory of 25.9 percentage points, uh, a likely margin of victory, and I gained 8 ELO for it. So, pretty good, if I do say so myself. Oh boy, game 22, I went against a myth, like a, like a Captain Myth this time, <laughs> and uh, yeah, she was kinda, kinda doing PvE, it wasn't like all in PvE, but she was definitely, you know, stacking traps, uh, and using stuff like Sunblades and all that, um, and you know, I was actually able to stay on top of things for most of the match, until I just didn't pull a shield. And I got her to about 3.9k before she sent this Yaga that went crazy. But she she had, like, I'm pretty sure, like, a good half of her deck was dedicated to shield counters. She had a million Fire Elves. Uh, she had a couple Glimpses, which, you know, as I've gone over before, is an absolutely insane spell for Myth to carry. And then, eventually... Like, I just, I, I just didn't pull a shield, <laughs> like I said. And so she Yagas me here, and, you know, she's she only has three buffs on this Yaga, because I, I do Wyvern off her, or two of her blades, but it still does 7.1k, because Myth is busted, I guess. <laughs> like, that is, it's like, dude, I cannot take anybody who says Myth is a bad school seriously when things like this just happen for no discernible reason. And then if the elves and glimpses weren't enough in the way of shield counter, she she had a drop bear. <laughs> so, I mean, this spell, <clears throat> y'all saw in Monday's video, this spell is just completely mental, and I don't know why it's in the game, but it is. And if you were asking me, I'd, I'd have said glimpse actually fulfills its role better, which really speaks to just how broken myth is right now, but it's not hard to tell that giving Myth a hit that clears weaknesses before it hits with Stone, while also giving Myth a hit that clears shields before it hits with Drop Bear, was an exceedingly bad dev decision. And I mentioned this on Monday too, it's a fire spell, Myth just has it. And to my knowledge, no other school has two spells with one that ignores with a hard counter and the other with a soft counter. Glimpse, at the very least, wouldn't melt you through a 45 shield and embrace, but even though she Drop Bear through both of those, it still did a whole 700 when it should have done next to nothing, and the regular overtime that Myth just has now for some reason was doing absolutely mass. And it's like Basilisk is gone, so now people use Drop Bear for, <laughs> for real Myth overtime, so that's crazy. And if I didn't know who this was and didn't think she was alright, I'd have probably thought she was setting just because of how her deck is made up, but that is really just how lopsided the Myth matchup is for an Ice, and... What's even more wild is, the matchup is about to go from Myth plus 40 to Myth plus 50 or more, because once that new lore spell Reckonettin comes out, the only form of protection anyone has against Myth is Brace. Like, it will be the definitive best school once Drains get nerfed, and with Etten on the horizon, there's a case to be made that it'll be the best school anyway. And... I'm not even sure what I could have done differently or what I could have learned from this except maybe I guess just, uh, just deck fail less for it. So the overall stats of the game, uh, versus Myth, lost and she had 2,000 HP left on the dot, and the result was Spirit Tamer plus 18.8% for the margin of victory, a likely margin of victory, and I lost 11 ELO for it. So, yeah, it's like <laughs> Myth counters ice harder than fire does and fire is supposed to be the hard counter while myth is the soft counter so good job designing the game devs <laughs> it's not like i could have used frostbite in here either because shift is a thing that exists but yeah myth is uh myth is just crazy 
While game 22 was kind of kind of just like a sad type of game because it really just showed how stupid broken myth is, game 23 was it it showed why Storm used to have like a really good shot against Ice and might have even been favored back in the day before Gollum and all that came out. This was one of the most annoying games in the video. It's like, well, game 22 featured poor man's PvE. Game 23 featured poor man's jading with his storm spamming. Very surprised. And I don't really think I need to say much more. Y'all are seeing all the clips where he sent his five berries. And that, it just, it blows my mind. Like, <laughs> it's, it's like berry is what storm needs to lean on against ice, but... I mean, dude, he was just stalling at the end. I don't think he hit me for anything without a berry or, like, anything meaningful for most of the, like, the tail end of the game. And, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I also uh, caught the rounding error happening uh, when he sent the Spellman and Owl through my shield. And I, I, I moused over it, <laughs> like, as, uh, as it happened the next round. So, yeah, that was... Uh, how about that? And then uh, he also used his share of set shields. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he does this for, you know, Storm Mirrors. It's like Storm and Fire, they just need to carry these sets. Because if they don't, it's just uh, it's just, it's just tough to beat. And if the other person does carry them and you don't, then you're most likely going to lose. So how about that? And then he also uh, used Reap the Whirlwind on one of my Frostbites, which now gives two 55% blades, which I think is hard. <laughs> but my answer to that was just a Golem, because Ice V Storm is pretty crazy. It's like, I have it rated as like Ice plus 25, which is a pretty likely margin. It's pretty close to safe. So yeah, how about that? And uh, speaking of all that... The stats for this game, I won with 5,200 HP. Results, I won by a margin of 36.3 percentage points, a safe margin, and I gained 12 ELO for it. So, all in all, <laughs> even though it lasted quite a bit longer than I would have liked, I, I got into 1K on multiple occasions, I still managed to win and get a good bit of ELO from it. So, that was good at least. Okay, game 24. This was about as tragic as it got. I was going against this fire. I was, you know, he wasn't really playing too well. And, you know, he was he was looking to go for a Sun Serpent. And if I could stop a Sun Serpent from happening, I was going to because a Sun Serpent does so much. But he was kind of playing predictably and I knew that I could have forced a King Art. So I was looking to start doing that. And then my internet went out. Yeah, it uh, it went out. I, I got that little yellow ball with the chain at a pivotal round. <laughs> he had, uh, you know, 10 pips, and I was, you know, still on my turn trying to do my thing. I was trying to, you know, shield here and stop him from taking a double buff Sun Serpent because he had it. And, yeah, uh, I came back and most of my health was gone. <laughs> so, I mean, what's crazy is that... Okay, so, so here are the stats for the game. I lost when the guy had 406 HP left. So the result was star plus 3.6 percentage points for the margin of victory, a lean margin of victory, and I lost 14 ELO. But 406 HP, when he was already running more HP than fires usually do, is crazy. <laughs> like, if, if we're just being real... How are you going to be on the hard counter school, get a free double buff Sun Serpent, and still <laughs> almost lose? I mean, dude, I, I would have won by a safe margin. I would have beat the brakes off of that guy if he didn't get that free Serpent. I mean, it's wild times we live in. But this all matters because... It's like I was talking about. I could have forced a King Art if I had been able to pick any cards, which would have done significantly less damage. I mean, Sun Serpent does mass, but King Art does, honestly, a lot, lot less. <laughs> like, a sizable percentage less. I would have, it, like, maybe two to 3,000 less damage I would have taken there if I had had a shield. It's... 
Like, like, dude, I am... I, I know I can say with certainty that I am moving from this goddamn apartment complex because the internet... It, this is always happening. It's always going out here. And, like, I'm surprised this is the first time it, it went out in, in this video. So, yeah, dude, I've... It was, it was kind of... It was just nuts. I would have absolutely just rolled him just rolled him if if I had been able to uh, to to actually pick a card on that turn so uh, yeah man game 24 tough And so we have reached game 25, the last one in this video, and I was going against another PvE Storm, and he goes for PvE here, but then he uses a Thunderman and Shrike, which was, in my opinion, a bit of an odd play, but I'm guessing he didn't pull Minotaur, which would have left me very vulnerable to an Owl or a King Art or whatever he was packing. Either way, I was able to win pretty handily. Just sort of did my thing. I columned a lot and sent a weaver through a tower shield and it still did 2.2k because, you know, the ice. Whereas a storm matchup doesn't quite get to the safe margin on average, but it is definitely the matchup where ice is the most favored out of all of them. And as you can see here, that was on full display. So I won with 7,241 HP. The result was a 50.5 percentage point margin of victory for me and a safe victory that's for sure and i gained seven elo from it so that was a nice little closer the game threw me a bone especially after game 24 and just all the nonsense that was going on in that one so yeah i was i was happy to end this video on a win and a high note and uh the guy this guy was actually he, he he's a fan he watches me like, I'm, I'm sorry. This is just Ice versus Storm. <laughs> like, Ice... It's, it's like playing Storm just in general is just sort of... You're, you're not going to have fun playing Storm in this meta. It's just how it is. And the devs just sort of hate Storm. So, tough. So, just as some closing thoughts. Over the course of 25 games, my win-loss ratio was 18 to 7, which is honestly not half bad for an Ice. And... Out of the seven losses, three were to PvE, one was to a heal spammer, one was to not critting when I needed to, one was to a glitch, and one was to my apartment complex's internet. Out of the wins, six were against death, four were against storm in some capacity, three were actually against balance, wasn't quite expecting a ratio of three and now against that school of all of them, two were against fire with three losses to those, and then my last three wins were against ice, life, and myth. I started at the default 1625 rank that you get if you end the last season at Veteran, which I did, and from there, I gained a total of 189 ELO in 18 wins and lost a total of 93. <laughs> How about that? 93 after 7 losses with a net total ELO gain of 96. 18 to 7, and I didn't even gain 100 ELO despite not even being that high ranked. The average ELO gain per win was a little over 10, while the average loss per loss was a little over 13. Ice as a school has not exactly fared well in the metas as of late, but a good ice can still get a pretty decent ratio and climb at least a little bit, and it helps that there are a lot of deaths in queue, because a good ice, especially with a deck that I use, can absolutely just melt a death. And I've also seen a number of storms queue in, which is a bit surprising. I mean, some of them are doing PvE, but, <laughs> you know, Ice is much better at defending against a PvE storm than most other schools, so that is a plus. Fire is still a problem for Ice to deal with if you're not running storm spells, but believe me when I say that if I'd crit that last time I OG in game 14, I would have been able to tell the game back in my favor. Not to mention, game 24 shouldn't even count as a statistic since my internet crashed midway through and I still held the guy to less than 500 health, which if he was running one less square jewel, I actually would have won, despite him getting a free double buff Sun Serpent while my internet was out. 
My final verdict on Ice vs. Fire is that if you are running Myth Accuracy, it's still a likely fire matchup, meaning they're, you know, favored, but if you play better, you can still overperform and eke out a win, like I did in games 10 and 11. As for the life matchup, fundamentally, Ice just struggles so much with healing to the point where I don't even think packing tritons would have saved me in game 6, and packing them might bring the, I guess, rating, average rating down to maybe life plus 25 to 30, but that's still incredibly lopsided and I don't really consider it worth, especially when you can shut down things like Dumoni and Fantastic Gym with Minotaur, uh, as well as giving yourself a significant edge in a mirror, uh, like in game 13. And additionally, over the course of this video, I've found that since we finally have three good alternatives for Shield Breakers compared to Frostbite, it is better for me to start packing an extra Tamauchi instead of the fifth bites that I was using beforehand. So that's uh, that's why I made the change at the beginning of the video. Frostbite is really good, but you know three schools can straight up shift it right back to you, while a fourth can cheap counter it for two pips, forcing you to snowman to gain any semblance of tempo back. It's much better to Golem or Dragon or Snowman if you have a weakness to break off a shield rather than run the risk of taking an extra thousand plus damage from your own spell. And it's really good if they don't have the counter, but with, you know, Lightning Bats being two pips, Shift being three, Gearhead being four, and Camp Handed being five, it's just pain. <laughs> Another thing I found was that shield counters these days are way too good. I mean, just take a look at everybody doing PvE right now. They all pack Path B Minotaur to get rid of up to four shields and turn them into 40% chromatic traps. And going for a Scion against anyone, you know, other than maybe a life that doesn't pack Elephant is a no-go with how many people carry Minotaur, as well as, you know, Fire and Myth just being able to flat out ignore shields. The bottom line is, I've learned a lot more about how ice works while I was making this video, and let me tell you, you have to play so much better than everyone else to win. And it doesn't help that practically everything you have has a cheap counter that just absolutely rolls it. I mean, I actually cannot think of anything ice uses that doesn't have a counter that ends up being super catastrophic for us. You really need to lean on your combos. Ice really needs pips, but it's not advised to run any empowers, and you need to save your shads for Weaver, so you're kind of just in a tough spot, so you can't really use Dark Surge. And Frostbite into Weaver is good if you have 8 pips and you pip can serve, but you know, there were times during these games where I didn't pee serve, like in game 19, and the match that I was winning by an insurmountable margin suddenly swung in favor of my opponent by double digits. Golem into Weaver is also good, and it's really good against balance, but it can very easily give up pressure if they just shield again, so there can be times where you're just kind of playing chicken with your opponent, and it really just takes forever for the game to go anywhere like it did in game 13. And, you know, sometimes you even need to eat a gearhead or a shift in some capacity to take your Weaver, which really just sucks in general, and is why Ice is still 6th out of 7 despite our you know, high resistance and the card library issue being totally fixed at this point. Ice is not a good school, but if you know what you're doing, you can serve up a surprise to people who underestimate you. And when I go for 50 games, that 18 and 7 you saw from this video is gonna get a hell of a lot closer together because around the time people hit night is when they start to struggle to climb and this gets exacerbated on an ice. Because, I mean, in game 5, you know, I would have lost maybe 20 elo to that recruit balance who used 6 burns on me had I not crit that last Steven Dragon. And in game 14, you saw what happened when I needed a crit to win and just didn't get it. So, you know, it's two sides of the same coin. And, Ice is favored in two matchups out of six, and one of those two is a swing matchup, while three of the other four are so lopsided against you, it's just crazy. Now that I'm higher rank though, the ELO system is going to punish me much harder, and I guess we'll just have to see where I'm at after game 50. So, that is going to wrap up this very long video, <laughs> so thank y'all for watching. I've been Ice Gold. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave like 50 comments for the algorithm. My Discord is down in the description if you want to chat with me some more, and I will see y'all later.